Hi, welcome back to Chai with Talk, and if you're new here, welcome! For today's interview, we're going to be interviewing an orthodontic assistant. Hopefully we can learn a lot from this orthodontic assistant, so let's jump right into the video. Today I'm joined with an orthodontic assistant, Norma. Okay, for my first question, as an orthodontic assistant, what do you normally do every day? So, mostly what we do is work um, inside patients' mouths, and uh, we are responsible for everything that has to do with braces and Invisalign. So that would mean placing, cleaning teeth, placing braces, changing wires, um, and in our particular office, we're expected to um, assess the patient, even though the chart might suggest we do um, a particular appointment we're, we're supposed to be at a skill level where we can also recognize um, treatment that needs to be done that may not be scheduled. Um, and we also work uh, with Invisalign uh, patients. Those are the patients that don't have braces but have the, the clear retainer-like appliances. And so um, that's, that's pretty much what we do generally. Okay. Um, did you always want to become an orthodontic assistant? I, I did not. I actually went to school for medical assisting and I knew I wanted to work with children. Um, and in the meantime, my own children were here at this orthodontic office at GKG. Back then it was called John Marshall Grady and Associates. And um, I was very interested in what the girls were doing and they advised me that since I had medical background, I could be trained to do this job. And so I did my externship here and um, 200 hours of it and then I was very privileged enough to be hired here and I've been here for 20 years. Ooh. So I know a lot of people in my age kind of get like grossed out by these things. Were you always like grossed out by that or like was there something that you really liked about it? What I liked about it was um, my original thoughts when I was in medical assisting school was that I might work for a pediatrician. In a pediatrician's office, you might have to tell somebody bad news. Well, that would mostly be the doctor, but I would have to be part of that. Right. In an orthodontic office, the only bad news you might have to tell somebody is, oh, we can't get your braces off today. There's a little bit of extra work we need to do. So when I weighed the odds, I thought I can have the best of both worlds. I can work with, with children. I love people. This is a people-oriented um, field. Um, and so, and I, I like to work with my hands rather than do a lot of paperwork. So it didn't occur to me that working in somebody's mouth might be gross. I looked at all the positives, you know, and I thought, wow, this could really be an exciting career. I get the best of all worlds. I, I get to watch people leave this office with a smile and be happy. I get to work with children. I get to work with adults and I get to make a difference in somebody's life for the positive. Oh, well, that's nice. Um, so what steps did you take to become like an orthodontic assistant? I guess, cause you said you started off going on like the more medical pathway. Like, did you have to do something to change it? Or like, were you no, like set on that path and you just had to do a little bit extra? When I did my externship here, quite honestly, I had no orthodontic experience. And um, unfortunately, if you want to be an orthodontic assistant, the only training you can get is um, to become a dental technician. Um, and for me, um, I found it more exciting to be in orthodontics because you actually do more hands-on and physically working on the patient. A little more than a dental technician might do, a lot more probably. So uh, there really is no specific training for orthodontic assisting. It's mostly on the job training, um, but because I had a medical background and was familiar with certain things, then it made it easier for me to transition. Okay, so what are some of your like most favorite things about the job you're in right now? People. Yeah. I, I, I really, really enjoy working with people. Um, it's rewarding. Um, I've actually seen some of my patients really go from lack of confidence because of how they looked to an about face where they leave here very confident and happy about how they look. Um, 
The other thing too is a lot of people think that when you talk about orthodontics that it's strictly cosmetic, which it is not. Um, there is a lot of medical benefits to having um, orthodontic work done. Really? Yes. Um, there, are, there are people that we help that have to have surgery, that have severe underbites, um, where they actually can't chew their food or bite their food properly. So that requires orthodontic work first, then an oral surgeon. Um, and so we, I just recently had a patient who had sleep apnea very bad. I mean, it was to the point where he couldn't have not survived the nights. Um, and so we had to put braces on him. He had to have so much work done, but he had to see an oral surgeon so that we could help him with his breathing. He no longer needs breathing apparatus at night. So there are many, many medical reasons to have orthodontic treatment and it's not all cosmetic. And so at the end of the day, you go home feeling like you have really contributed to the care of individuals. And it's, for the, it's, for, it's a positive outcome usually. So that makes me happy. Okay, um, so you mentioned like this guy who had sleep apnea. I feel like that would cause like some kind of stress. Do you get a lot of stress from your job? Like how do you handle any stress you get? So yes, the job can be very stressful because um, for many different reasons, you know, not everybody is a compliant patient. Not everybody is easy in the chair. Sometimes we have kids or even adults who are very sensitive or very nervous about the appointment. Um, and so that takes extra time and of course our our appointments are scheduled and timed. Um, and so you have the, the stress that I have on my job is what you might expect to come with the job. You know, in our office in particular, the skill level is very high. And so, um, and I'm proud to say that, um, but because the skill level is high, you know that everything you do has to be just about near perfect as that patient leaves the office. So there are those kind of stresses. Now, um, what I do to work around them is um, uh, I just do what I have to do to get through the appointment, try to remain as calm as I can on the job because you don't want to upset your patient. Yeah. Um, and then when I go home, I chill. <laughs> you know, I just sit down and, and, and take a lot of deep breaths and just allow myself to relax. But on the job, you you just try to remain as calm as you can. Okay. Um, do you have any advice for people like me, like high schoolers who are thinking about going into any oral healthcare profession? Yes, do it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my advice because of all of the other positive things that I mentioned to you. Um, it does, although I would say don't stop at being an orthodontic assistant. You wanna go straight to the top and be the doctor. Um, it's a lot of extra work, it's a lot of extra education, probably a lot of student loans that you might have to deal with. I had student loans as well. Um, but, um, you know, when you look in our office and, and you see the number of patients that we see and the quality of care that's given here, that could all be at your direction. Um, if you're not interested in going that far, I would still recommend dental because um, again, I, I wouldn't be good at telling somebody they have cancer, but that's my personality. There are definitely people who are skilled um, that are able to say that compassionately. I myself would probably be in tears and that might not be the best for that patient at that time. So for me, and, and if whoever is listening to this, if you, if you want to be in a medical field where it can be very rewarding at the end of the day, and you can really make a difference in somebody's life, um, whether it's strictly cosmetic or medical, and um, you can go home at night and relax about it, this would be the way to go. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much, Norma. Oh, you're very welcome. It was my pleasure. Thank you. I hope you learned a lot from this video because I sure did. Anyways, Thank you for watching this video and if you want to see any doctor in particular interviewed or have any questions you'd like me to ask them, leave it in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one. Bye!